On today's show, we head into the California desert for a look at how a group of off-road enthusiasts are pitching in to save their hobby for future generations. Then, we'll explore one of the biggest off-road vehicle parks in the country, our escape from the asphalt jungle. And we'll show you how the pros prepare their trucks for big time adventures. This and a lot more, next on Four Wheeler TV. Although many of our off-road vehicle parks are being closed by federal government regulations, one of the best and still active federal off-road parks is geographically about 250 miles due east of Los Angeles, California, just off Highway 247 near the town of Yucca Valley. Getting there is always interesting, especially for the first timer. Roadside curiosities like the strange sculpted dinosaurs at Cavazon to the fields of energy producing windmills outside of Palm Springs are worth a quick stop. Not to mention an Indian casino or two, if you feel so lucky. We didn't, so we pressed on. Television and screen actor Tony Becker, an off-road enthusiast himself, decided to join us and served up some helpful tech tips along the way. I get excited when I'm going wheeling and I forget things. And then in the driving, everything shifts and moves and I don't really care about anything but this. I do a cross pull on them. Um, but just check them, just make sure they're tight all the time. I, every time you stop, you just kind of make it a habit. I do, and I think all the guys I know do the same thing. I just got these tires today put on. There's Mickey Thompson Classic 2s and some thick c pick Fun Gun trees, and the guy says, after 150 miles, check the bolts, the lugs, and make sure they're tight. They kind of loosen up a little bit. Just the movement of the vehicle and the aluminum. Though we'd like to check out more of what this area had to offer, with bad weather rolling in from the west, we decided to secure our rigs and get to Johnson Valley before Mother Nature made the roads impassable. I gotta go wheeling, I can't stand here all day. So what attracts so many to the middle of the desert? The sheer size of Johnson Valley is its calling card. It is a 200,000 acre playground for the biggest and the smallest motorized visitor. The Bureau of Land Management that oversees the park keeps constant watch on the people and the environment, and those that spend any time enjoying it know how lucky they are to be able to wheel in such incredible terrain. 
While most of the trails were specifically developed for off-roaders, some were created by the early mineral mining efforts in the area. And these trails that dot the landscape make for a premier California destination for the weekend enthusiast. In all, the Bureau of Land Management oversees this incredible site in elevations ranging from 4,600 feet at Hartwell Hills to 2,300 feet at Melville Dry Lake. To the seasoned off-highway enthusiast, the Hammers is a special invitation to test their skills. Others choose an easier going terrain on the flatlands. Phil Howe explains. We're in the Johnson Valley OHV area in the California desert, home of the infamous Hammer Trails. They're hardcore and they're a lot of fun, and we've got some world-class drivers with us today who are ready to take it on. The weather's a bit bad, but you know, it may be rainy, but at least it's windy and cold. Sledgehammer is the original Hammer Trail, built by Victor Valley Four Wheelers over a decade ago. You might even say it's the father of all the hardcore rock trails. So let's go. Here we are with Walker Evans, legendary off-road race driver. And uh, Walker, so what makes you go slow now? Well, uh, sooner or later, everybody has to slow down a little bit, you know. And You know, I've done the Bajas for 31 years, and there's always something to do beyond that. And I've just really fell in love with rock crawling coming out. After all, I still got a motor. I'm still out in the desert with Mother Nature, and uh, I just love every bit, minute of it. Believe me, Phil. Hey, Walker, I got a question for you. Are you worried about getting scratches on this? Heck no, I got a great body shop. <laughs> it's a beauty. I've never Thank seen you. anything like it. What's really neat about this, street legal and still have that fun. But you, you can't get the experience. Yeah, you can get a lot of experience. <laughs> Not as much as you. <laughs> you kidding me? Let's run up this thing. Through the good graces of the people at Curry Enterprises, I get to drive part of Sledgehammer today with the Wrangler Strangler, which belongs to Frank Curry. The suspensions on these Jeeps are built not only for lift to clear the tires, but they're built to work. As they come up over every rock, they get maximum articulation, so the tire stays on the ground almost all the time. Walker's Jeep has his own coilovers and he has curry control arms and suspension pieces. John Bundrant has the only Toyota in the group. John owns All Pro Off Road, who's the Toyota specialist. John was also the rock crawling national champion last year. His is built a little different. He has leaf springs up front with coilovers in back with a four-link. And here's the infamous mailbox on Sledgehammer. This is the halfway point, and it used to be the end of Jackhammer. When Victor Valley brought Jackhammer down, they came in down this valley and ended right here. And then they built another canyon, so now Jackhammer doesn't come in here. As you can see, 386 miles to the Rubicon. We got Hollywood that direction, Hollister that way. Hell, some people think it's even closer when they get to this point, or if they get to this point. I kind of got to bypass a few things that these guys are on because of my clearance. Because of, which is a lot of clearance. You know, hardest thing you can do is try and talk and drive. Hey, uh, guys. Yeah, go ahead. Listen, I somehow 
just put my Jeep over on its side. I'm gonna need a winch. You're in good shape for the shape you're in. Thank you very much. From a champ to a chump and just one bump. That's right. No, we'll pull it right over. So, Tony, I saw you. Oh, man. What happened to you? Did the Jeep roll over you? I can't even speak. <laughs> Listen, um, I had to move a few rocks. Oh, Listen, I see. Listen, that was... um. I've been up that trail a lot of times. Yeah. It's never been that difficult. And I don't know if it was that I wanted to hang with the big dogs and follow them, or I'm just terrible. We know what the rollover was. You're an actor. You like to be on camera. You know, and so you knew that if you rolled over, Listen, you'd for sure get in the shot. I, these guys showed up with some really nice rigs, and no one's paying attention to me. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> All right, so I did what I had to do. I'm not beyond wrecking this Jeep. After that mishap, the rest of the trail was pretty good, other than damage. But the thing is, is you can't, you know, you can't say that I'm going to go, oh, yeah, I'm wheeling with Walker Evans. I'm wheeling with Curry. I mean, just these guys are on another level. And it was excellent. We had a great time. I, I want to do it again. Now for the Skyjacker Shock of the Day. Four Wheeler TV, common sense tip number 233. The next time you go four wheeling with friends and family, it's always wise to ask the landowner's permission first. Otherwise, be prepared for the consequences. The trails at Johnson Valley are as diverse as the rigs that wheel in the area. The trails can range from loose sand dunes and hard packed dry washes to huge rock obstacles, each considered challenging enough for most rigs. Johnson Valley is definitely a place to have fun, but there's a serious side to what these enthusiasts are doing too, one that definitely sheds new light on who they are and what they're really about. Primedia's group of enthusiast magazines, along with some dedicated volunteers, organized the Johnson Valley cleanup recently to help promote the sport for future generations of wheelers. Steve, this is fantastic. Thanks. I mean, all these people are out here uh, pitching in to help clean up the desert. Was this your brainchild? Yeah, I guess so. I think, you know, obviously some people have done this before, but, but it was my idea to do it through Primedia. You know, a lot of these people are out here all the time using this place but you see them racing around in the desert or rock crawling, but you seldom see anything like this. Yeah, you know, we come out here a lot and, and we always notice that it's, it's kind of dirty and we thought that, wow, you could really clean this place forever and never really finish. So th this is probably, hopefully, the first of, uh, of a lot of these for us. Well, I see we've already found some cars out there and dragged them in. Have a dumpster over there that's halfway full. Looks like we're gonna find more garbage than we have ways to get it out of here. You know, I can't believe how much garbage is out here. I mean, look at all these cars. We know what they are. You know, we have some insurance scams where people can't make the payments and they end up out in the desert. We have some legitimate thefts where people actually leave them out here after they've stripped them and then people come out and burn them up and have a good time. I can't believe there's so many of them out here. Yeah, you know, who would have thought there were so many cars in this, this one little area, that just this part of the desert? And uh, you know what? I, I, I got to say that, that we never could have done this this weekend without the help of uh, the guys from Randy's Ring and Pinion, Donna V Jeep, um, everybody at, at uh, Donahoe Racing, Toyo Tires, uh, and also, of course, All Pro Off Road. Yeah. Uh, we probably got about 12 bags and two loads of metal already. Yeah, we are picked up quite a bit. A There's a ton out there still, so yeah. Congratulations on your win at the Baja 1000. Oh, thank you very much. What brings you out here in the Johnson Valley today? Well, you know, we, we do a ton of testing out here. We got a lot of local desert races that are put on out here, and we want to make sure that this is here for a long time to come, and, and uh, it's important for us to make sure that that our reputation is desert racers that we take care of our environment. 
So we're here with the Department of the Interior Bureau of Land Management, who are our partners in this cleanup this weekend. And uh, we have Mono, Art, and Patrick. You guys administer the Johnson Valley Off-Highway Vehicle Area. What's that entail? Well, we do the rock crawling events, we do the motorcycle races, we do uh, car and truck races, we do a lot of cleanups. I'm really glad all these people showed up, they're really nice. You it, mentioned just, that, that all this, this trash can actually be a hazard and, and you as EMTs yes, sometimes have to deal with well, people running into it. It, uh, it interferes with our rescues, you know, if you go into a rescue and you find somebody, then you find all your tires flat, you know, and that's a big hazard. Came all the way down from Washington because Randy's is pretty dedicated to making sure that our land stays open and uh, in well, California, Washington, Utah, everywhere. And uh, we try to be involved the, the best we can uh, with most of the events that are happening. And this is a great event. I mean, coming down and picking up trash, well, no matter where it's at, it's a good thing and uh, something we all need to do everywhere. You put this whole thing together. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How hard was that? You know, actually, this one's not so bad. Surprisingly, you know, the people out here are so enthusiastic about, um, you know, cleaning up. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You know, some of the other events I do, you know, you spend six or seven months planning and trying to promote the project. And here, all we had to do is say, hey, we're doing a cleanup. We're going to come out and we're going to really get involved in nature and try and give back since, you know, we actually get to enjoy this on a regular basis. And that was it. How did the BLM handle that? I mean, were they really helpful? Yeah, they were really jazzed about it. They provided us with um, some dumpsters and put us in contact with the right people to make sure we got our permits taken care of. And oh, really? I didn't know yeah. they brought the dumpsters out. That's great. Yeah, they brought them out. We didn't have to take care of that. Do you think we'll be able to do more of this stuff in the future? Do you plan on it? I would love to. Um, you know, if, if the interest is there, and thankfully our sponsors were really great about um, providing us with um, you know, the resources we needed to make this happen. And if that happens, you know, next time, I'd love to do this twice a year. I'd love to be able to come out here at least once a year, go out to another place, and, you know, just do what we can. It's really great. I really, I thank you very much. And I'm sure everyone, all the people that might see this stuff will too. No problem. I'm glad I could be involved in it. When we return, we'll show you how the pros prepare their rigs for any kind of adventure. So John, we had a chance to talk a bit on the hammers, but uh, didn't get a real good chance to see how you built this vehicle. So show us. Uh, we run a sway away shocks in this. This is how it has our coilover kit, where we take the, uh, the standard coil and shock and you make it into one piece. So the coil and the shock are one piece. Notice this has got a remote reservoir that's mounted up in here. Another important thing on these Jeeps is we try to keep the bottom of them as flat as possible. Notice here, it's got a custom skid plate. It doesn't hang down below the frame rails. You know, so when you're, you're rolling over those rocks, you're not gonna hang up on nothing. Kevin, you've done a lot of work on your CJ2A. Why don't you show us? All righty. Uh, I started out with a, a YJ frame. Uh, I like the square tube. It is, it's easy to weld things to. Um, I, I do some jumping and uh, it handles the jumps pretty good. I've got uh, air bump stops here to take up the when I land hard. Uh, I've got a big fuel cell because in Moab I do a lot of uh, long distance uh, Jeep trips. We're here with Walker Evans, legendary off-road race champion. This vehicle that I brought out here is what you call a pre-runner. It's not really my competition vehicle. My competition vehicle is a little smaller. And, uh, but everybody has to have the toy that they go play with, whether it be with the family or whatever. Let me show you around this vehicle. First of all, you got to have a great big old winch on it in case you can't get up one of these vertical rock crawls. Uh, they call them waterfalls. Sometimes you have to even winch yourself up. We started around here. We got uh, Walker Evans wheels on it, of course, my shocks. We got a JP aluminum body on it. Larry. Yes. You spend a lot of time as producer of Four Wheeler TV behind the camera, but you also come out off road as much yeah. as we do. Yeah, I do. I mean, I have to get out here somehow. Look at look around you. You know, it's a soggy, dry lake bed. I I can't take the uh, the car out there, so I have to have something that's going to have four wheel drive and. You know, Nissan has uh, been kind enough to loan us this new Xterra. This is a supercharged Xterra, and it gets out 
practically where you want to go. You know, I have a three inch lift right now on it, uh, thanks to Cal Mini. Uh, you know, I have armor all underneath it for the rocks. We removed the spare tire. We put it on this new Cal Mini tire rack. It's swing away gate and allows us, you know, to get everything clear from underneath so we don't get caught up in any obstacle. Cal Mini has to be congratulated for the quality of their parts. And Nissan has to be congratulated for building such a great vehicle uh, right off the showroom floor. It's pretty confident. So this weekend, we had a great time. We wheeled with the best. I think they're the best. And we, we kind of define these guys as world-class drivers, world-class rigs. And how do we really define that? What does that mean? I think for a vehicle to be classified as world-class, it needs to have a suspension that's better than most, articulates well, allows you to do the hardest, most extreme trails or obstacles. You have to have a drivetrain that's the strongest, that doesn't break at the slightest uh, stress. You have engines, induction, everything works together to make that vehicle better than almost every other vehicle out in the back country. We've seen a lot of vehicles and a lot of drivers pushing the envelope this weekend. And we hope you've had as much fun as we have covering it. Let's hit the trail. Let's do it.